Well, welcome everybody to our research refresher workshop, how to write a literature review. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our two expert librarians to take the session from here. Um, we'll be hearing today from Robin Hartman and Claire Nickerson. So Robin, please take it from here. Great. So we're going to be talking about literature reviews. And in this session, we're going to cover what a literature review is and what it is not, how to use iterative searching to find resources for your literature review, how to um, read those scholarly sources you have found, and how to organize them using software and various st structural strategies. If you do have questions while well, we go along, you can put them in the chat and hopefully we'll, we can see that as we go. And get you some answers. So defining a literature review. What is a literature review? A literature review is a type of, sorry, let me move my thing. It's a type of scholarly researched writing that discusses the already published information on a topic. So what do we mean by we say literature? We're discussing the literature. This might make you think about uh, when you were in uh, English lit class and you had to read a novel, but what we mean by the literature is a little bit different. The literature is the information that has already been published on the topic. So it's what other people have said about whatever topic it is that you're researching. This can be from primary sources like speeches or interviews, reports, or it could be from secondary sources, which would uh, be peer reviewed journal articles, dissertations, books, and there's other things that fall under these categories. So as you're looking at this material, the um, the literature review can be just the only thing that you need to write, a standalone paper, or it can be part of a larger research paper. It's just part of your introduction or um, before you get to the, the part where you're diving into your experiment or your survey or your, your um, thing that you're trying to find out. When it's a standalone paper, and I have an example up here on the screen, the literature review acts like as a summary of what has been said and done about a topic so far. It can be very useful for other scholars when they're reading about um, their field because it's a way for them to catch up really quickly on major ideas and developments that have been happening. And it gives them a chance to see what else needs to be done. What could they be working on? What can they be exploring to keep the, keep the field moving forward in the future? It can also be part of a larger paper. And here it still acts as a summary, uh, but the prior information it provides can also support that new thing that you're researching or that argument that you're making. You're trying to convince your audience to try a new teaching technique or a new experiment. So that literature review supports your new information that you'll be presenting later in the paper. And you can do this as part of the introduction. Um, and it provides your reader the background knowledge that they need to understand the rest of the paper. And it can also highlight key ideas or gaps in the work and how your research fits within everything else that's already happened. So you have, you have the thing that you're trying to explore or find out about or um, experiment with, and the literature review says, this is what's been done before and how that leads up to the thing that I am doing and how you can learn from it and everything else that has come before. This might seem kind of familiar to you because 
you have done this type of work in other reports and papers. You have gone out and found resources to quote or summarize. And by putting this, um, the, the skills you've used by looking at things and summarizing them, synthesizing, combining information from lots of different sources, that helps you in your literature review. You might feel like, I've done this before, I just didn't call it a literature review. While you're doing this, just remember this part of your paper does not present a new argument or new information. It is building a foundation that summarizes and synthesizes what's already existing. This, this is so that your readers can understand what has been happening in the field and then go on to understand your new amazing information that you found out. You can review all this about what is a literature review. Um, it, we're talking more about this in this presentation, of course, but we also have a guide and I'll put the link in the chat. We also have a guide that you can go to to review everything I just said and even more information about summarizing and synthesizing and all that. Any questions? about what is a literature review before we move on? Okay, if you do have questions, just let us know. Next, up, we're gonna talk about finding those sources that you're going to use in your literature review. Right, so before you can do any writing, you need to actually find those resources. So next slide, please. There are a couple of different places that you can start your research. Uh, you can start either in our research databases or in our subject and course guides. We do have at least one research guide for every subject that is taught at FHSU. However, uh, here I'm choosing to highlight the research databases. If you are not sure what databases are best for your subject, you can use that subjects dropdown on our A to Z databases page to find databases that are going to be relevant and help you find the best information for your topic. Next slide, please. So within our databases, our databases use something called keyword searching. So we don't use long phrases when we're searching in the databases, that's just gonna confuse them. What we do is we break down the topic that we're interested in into keywords and we connect them using our search operators, which are and, or, and not. So in this example, I am looking for articles that are about both law and airlines not going to go over the basics of searching in great depth because I want to focus specifically uh, on search strategies that are good for expanding your literature review. Next slide, please. One other thing that you may want to take into account as you're conducting your initial search uh, is that if you find an article that seems promising and you would like to find some similar articles, Take a look at the list of subject terms or subject headings that have been applied to that article within the database. And go ahead and use those as the basis for your next search. Next slide, please. As you are doing this, literature reviews tend to be relatively long compared to other papers, and you may be using a lot of different articles and sources within your literature review. And so it is really helpful to keep a research log of where you have searched and what search term you used and whether you found any relevant articles, whether you identified any relevant subject headings. This helps you ensure that you're not repeating searches that you have already done uh, and make sure that your search is proceeding in a logical manner. Next slide, please. All right, so a strategy that I particularly want to talk about 
uh, in relation to finding resources for literature reviews is called citation tracing. So when we talk about the literature in the library, we also like to talk about scholarship as a conversation. So authors who publish articles, they don't publish those in a vacuum. They publish those uh, in response to previous literature. They publish those um, to build on previous literature. So citation tracing is a way to follow that scholarly conversation, which can really help to inform the structure of your literature review. Next slide, please. So there are two directions that you can trace citations. First one is tracing citations backward. In other words, finding older articles that your article that you already have has cited. And there are three steps to that. First of all, if you don't have a full citation, and you may not, um, sometimes you may have an abbreviated citation or only an in-text citation, you need to find a full citation before you can actually find that article. Secondly, we want to locate the journal by title uh, and determine whether we have access to it through Foresight Library or whether it's going to be something that you'll need to request via interlibrary loan. And then third, you'll want to navigate to the specific article that you want within that journal by year, volume, and issue number. So let's go over those steps one by one. Next slide, please. All right. So if you do not have a full citation, if you only have, say, an article title or authors, um, the best place to go to find that full citation, in my experience, is Google Scholar. I do not recommend starting your search for articles in Google Scholar because there is uh, a lot of junk in there that really does not fall within the, the confines of peer-reviewed articles, which is what you usually want to use for your literature review. Um, and it doesn't provide as many search options as our databases in terms of being really specific uh, about keywords and filters. However, it is really excellent if you already know what you want. So in this example here, uh, I have searched for the article title in quotation marks. The quotation marks tell Google Scholar that we want to find those words together as a phrase. This will also work in our library catalog and most of our library databases. Now that we have the citation, the full citation, we want to especially make note of the journal title, the year, the volume, and the issue number. So in this case, this article was published in 2018, and it was published in volume 63, issue 3 of Administrative Science Quarterly. And those are the pieces of information that we are going to need uh, in order to track down the full text of this article. Next slide, please. All right, so step two, you want to find the journal. On the left side of our library homepage in the collections menu, there's a link to our eJournals list. There's also a link to the eJournals list at the very top of our library catalog if you are already in the catalog. Uh, once you are there, you can search for the title of a journal, again in quotation marks, um, because that tells the the catalog that you would like that journal uh, as a phrase. So here I've searched for the journal title, Administrative Science Quarterly, and I found it. Next slide, please. So the reason that we search for the journal title in the catalog and not for the article title is that not all of our databases are what we call indexed at the article level. In other words, our catalog for some databases will tell you every single article that's in that database. Uh, but for other databases, it will only tell you what journals we have access to within that database. So we navigated to the journal. Uh, and in the journal record, which is what you're seeing over on the left here, uh, you'll see in the view it section what 
databases we have access to that journal through, and it may be multiple databases like we're seeing over here on this slide. And it will also tell you what date ranges are covered within each of those databases. So in this case, we were looking for an article from 2018. So we wanna make sure that we choose a database that includes 2018 within that date range. And once we have done that and we've clicked into that database, there will be a list in different databases. It's located in slightly different places, um, but there will always be, almost always, be a list of volumes and issues. So here within one of our EBSCOhost databases in the education source, you'll see over on the right, we have that list of issues um, and we're able to drill down to volume 63, issue three. And once we click on that, we'll have a list of articles that were published in that issue, including the article that we were looking for, ideally. If you ever have difficulty following this process, uh, I highly recommend that you contact a librarian for help um, because sometimes things do go a little bit wonky in either the catalog or the database, and we'll be able to help you troubleshoot that. Next slide, please. All right, so that was citation tracing backward. We can also trace citations forward. This is particularly useful if you find a great, super relevant article for your topic that was um, a little bit old. Uh, in a lot of disciplines, things change very quickly and your instructor may recommend or require that you use articles published within the last five years or the last 10 years to make sure that that content is up to date. So particularly if you find an older article, you can trace uh, newer articles that have cited that older article to see how other authors have responded to that uh, and what changes there have been in the literature. So the steps for that, first of all, search for the article in Google Scholar. We already covered that. You search for the article title in quotation marks, and usually it will be the first thing that comes up. Then underneath that record in Google Scholar, you will see the little cited by link. If in fact it has been cited, if it's particularly new or particularly obscure, it may not have been cited, in which case you will not see that. Uh, but you click on that link and then Google Scholar will bring up a list of those, in this case, 18 articles that have cited this older article. Uh, and from that, you will want to note what articles are promising. And again, the information that you want to note in addition to the article title is going to be the journal title, the year and the volume and issue number. And then once you have identified those promising articles, you're gonna to wanna to go through the steps that we already covered, uh, searching the e-journal list and navigating to the issue in the database uh, at Forsyth. Next slide, please. All right, so it may happen, uh, particularly when you are doing citation tracing, that you will come up with a record for an article um, for instance, uh, a citation or an abstract, which is a short summary of the article, uh, for an article that we don't actually have access to the full text of. Um, if you cannot access the full text of an article through Forsyth Library, uh, I generally would recommend searching for an open access copy using Google Scholar because sometimes the author will have posted uh, a copy of that article on their own web page or within their institution's scholarly repository, just like we have at Fort Hayes. Uh, if you are looking in one of our databases and you see find it at Forsyth, uh, instead of having access to the full text PDF or the full text HTML, and you click on that find it at Forsyth, uh, and the catalog opens up and it says that the article is not available, uh, if you found an article online and you are encountering a paywall, even when you're logged in through Forsyth Library, or if you need a book or other physical item owned by Forsyth Library, but you live too far away, those are going to be the times that you want to use interlibrary loan. 
Interlibrary Loan is a service that we use uh, to get you access to books and articles uh, and other resources that we don't have at Forsyth Library. Uh, generally, if you request an article or a book chapter or something short, uh, it will be scanned and uploaded to our online portal uh, within a couple of days. It's really pretty quick unless you're looking for something very obscure. Um, if it's a book, it will be physically mailed to you if you live outside of Hayes uh, or mailed to the library where you can pick it up if you live in Hayes. And I see Brittany has helpfully posted in the chat a link to learn more about interlibrary loan, particularly if never, you've never done it before. Uh, there's a helpful FAQ there. Uh, and of course, you're always welcome to ask for help from a librarian if you need uh, assistance placing that interlibrary loan request. Next slide, please. All right, I'm going to turn things back over to Robin. She's going to talk about reading research articles. All right, so you found some interesting information, uh, but you're still trying, you might still be trying to figure out, is this something I should look at in depth for my literature review? Or you might be looking at something and it's like 30 pages long or 50 pages long or 100 pages long or even more if it's a dissertation or, or um, something like that. Don't be too discouraged. There are some tips and tricks to uh, reading research articles, especially when you're in that stage of do I want to spend more time with this or not. This is usually during your search so that you can have then a list of things you want to want to read later and more in depth and analyze it so you could start writing that literature review. So the first thing is to identify the structure of the article. Research articles tend to have a formal structure that um, the discipline says they should be in or the journal says they should be in. And even if they're in different fields or disciplines, they'll have similar sections. They might have different names. They might have the, the title right there. They might for that section, or they might not. But if you take a moment just to look at the structure of the article, you can then figure out what you should do with it. Most commonly, especially when it's a research article where someone has um, done some sort of experiment or done a survey and asked a bunch of people their opinion about something, or they've um, piloted a new program and they want to tell you the results, they're going to basically be in this order. You'll have an abstract, which is a formal summary of the article. And many times you can read that right in the database before you even open the article. They'll have an introduction, which has the background information. And this is also where you'll usually find their literature review in with this introduction. Then they jump to methods or methodology. And this is them explaining, this is what I did. This is the type of survey I sent out, or this is how I combined one chemical with another chemical to make a new thing. I don't know anything about chemistry. <laughs> but that's when they give the details of this is what I did. Then they'll tell you the results, the data they collected. And that moves into the discussion, which is this is what that data means. This is what it means to the field. This is what we should be thinking about. This is what, um, what meaning you can take from all these numbers and, and data. Then last, there is a conclusion, which usually is a summary of what they learned and everything else that they just talked about. So usually this is kind of the order that you will find things in. Again, they might be labeled methodology, results, discussion, or they might not be and just flow from one to the other. So you might have to, to spend a little time saying, oh, that's where the results start. So once you identify the parts of this article, 
you do not have to read them in this order. I give you permission to skip around. Don't read it from beginning to end, especially when you don't even know if this is a good article for your literature review yet. You, uh, you can skip around. Don't read it from beginning to end like it was your favorite mystery novel. Take a moment and you can uh, rearrange that reading order so you read the most important parts first to help you make that decision if you want to spend more time with this article. So, and I'll go into this a little bit more detail. Look at those things that summarize the article first. The abstract, the introduction, which gives you that background information, which will help you understand everything else, and the conclusion, and then move on to the discussion and the results and the method. I'll dive into these a little bit deeper, which I just said. <laughs> So the most more general parts of the research paper, abstract, introduction, and conclusion, will give you an overview of the information. And usually by the time you're done skimming these parts, you know whether or not you should keep reading it. So you can say, okay, this is not really what I'm looking for. I'm going to put it over here and keep going on with my search and find different articles. Or you can... Um, say, well, I, I'm not sure yet. I need to get a bit more information about this. Or you might even know right then that this is a great paper and you can put it in your other pile to analyze later and also use it for citation tracing. So we have those first three parts, which is the background information, summary information. Then later um, you can move on to the more detailed section um, with the discussion and the results and the methods. So this is what you'll be, you could be using and analyze this information more when you're writing your paper and synthesizing all the different resources you have. So you don't need to read these first. If you're just in that decision mode, you, you can use the other parts of the paper to help you. So, Remember that this is not like reading a book. You can read it in sections. You have permission to skim sections and skip around. Um, if the article is not useful for what you need, stop reading, move to another article, especially when you're in the search mode, when you're trying to just make a pile or a list, however you want to imagine it, of the things that you'll be using for your literature review. If something is not helpful, Stop using it, move on. If it is helpful, you can keep reading. You can jump to their references section, start doing that citation tra tracing. Go into um, a little bit more depth. We do have a video tutorial on this. If you ever want to review it after this session, I'll put that, that in our link. It's also on our literature review guide. Now that we have all this information, we have the pile or list of things that we want to include in our literature review, um, Claire can help us organize it. Yes, very important to organize your literature review. Next slide, please. All right, so my very first piece of advice to you when you're working on a literature review or indeed any longer piece of writing that you are going to be using outside sources for is to use a citation manager, which is a type of software that keeps track of all of your sources and makes it really easy for you to cite things uh, and create a bibliography. There are a lot of different options for citation management software. The one that we use the most here at Forsyth Library is called Zotero. And the reason for that is that it is free and it is open source. So if you do some research while you're a student here at FHSU and then you leave FHSU, you will still have access uh, to all of the research that you've collected as opposed to some of these other options uh, where you have an institutional subscription. When you graduate, you might lose access to some of that. Next slide, please. All right. So a brief overview of how Zotero works. 
uh, it has three pieces. It has a little add-on for your browser that adds a convenient button in your menu bar. It has a separate piece of software that contains your library of articles and other sources of information. And it has a plugin in Microsoft Word. So when you want to add something that you have found to your Zotero library, all you do is you click that little icon in your browser, and then all of the information about the article or other resource will magically appear in your Zotero library. You can see the screenshot there in the middle. The right side of that has all of what we call the bibliographic information, uh, which is the information about the article that you need to cite it and also the abstract. Uh, you can also add notes uh, or tags to your Zotero library, which will help you keep track of what you have read and what it said that you found useful. Then finally, once you have uh, all of your sources in Zotero, you can easily, within Microsoft Word, click one button to add an in-text citation. And when you get to the end, you can click that Add or Edit Bibliography button, and automatically a list of all of your sources that you have included in-text citations for will appear. They'll be alphabetized. They will be hopefully correct. I do always recommend double checking that metadata in your Zotero library before you generate those citations, um, because it will sometimes happen that the information is, is not in the correct format. So you do still need to know uh, what a citation in your discipline looks like, whether MLA or APA uh, or Chicago or some other style. Um, and then uh, if, if you're familiar with that, you will be able to troubleshoot where your citations, your automatically generated citations are going wrong. Uh, and there is more information about installing and using Zotero um, on that literature review guide that Robin links to on the tab that is about organization. Next slide, please. All right. So once you have all of your articles analyzed and organized, the next thing that you're going to want to do uh, is arrange them within your literature review. So your goal is not just to summarize the literature, it is to tell some sort of story about what is going on with the literature that will make sense to your reader. It is not just a list of here's what this article said, here's what that article said. So you want to organize it in a logical manner. And depending on what your paper is about, there are a number of different ways that you can do that. For instance, if you are writing a paper about some sequence of historical events, you may want to organize your literature review by historical chronology. Uh, in other words, what order did things happen in within the history? And ideally, how that's going to connect to a new perspective that your paper provides on those events, assuming that you are writing a paper that starts with a literature review and not a paper that consists only of literature review. Alternatively, you can organize your literature review by publication order of the sources that you are using. This is great for highlighting how scholars' ideas about your topic have changed over time, because in a lot of disciplines, uh, they, they do change a lot over time. And ideally, your paper would build on that progression of ideas. You can organize it by trend. So if, for instance, there are several different groups of scholars who have different ideas about your topic, uh, you might consider those trends in, in the literature, uh, in which case you might want to highlight those. Uh, and then you'll want to explain how your paper fits into those trends or breaks away, perhaps, from the current trend can also organize by theme if there are particular themes that you want to emphasize in the literature review. 
uh, and how those connect to your paper. Or if, especially if you are doing a research study where you are collecting new data, it might be helpful to organize your literature review by research methods. Um, for instance, a survey or an interview or the chemistry experiment that Robin was talking about earlier. Uh, and frequently, if you do choose to organize your literature review by research method, uh, you will be explaining how those methods informed your research. For instance, you might be using a research method that was pioneered by someone else, and you'll want to explain the background on that. Next slide, please. All right, I think that is all we have in terms of content specifically. However, we would be happy to answer any questions that you may have if you want to put them in the chat or just unmute yourself and shout out. Okay, hearing um, no questions, um, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up with just a, a few additional tips um, on where you all can, can go for some additional help. So I, we lost our slides, so if you'll, you'll hang tight. Um, oh, there we go, Claire's got those up. Very good. Um, so as you know, today's session um, is being recorded. And so you can, of course, refer back to this recording. Um, if you'd like, it will be posted um, by the end of the week on the Forsyth Library YouTube channel. Um, so you can refer to it there, um, as well as all the great links um, and additional resources that have been shared in the chat connecting you with Forsyth Library um, tutorials and, and other resources. Next slide, please, Claire. Now, of course, you can always ask a librarian if you have questions. So today we heard from um, Robin and Claire, so you can always contact them directly. I have included their liaison areas below, um, and you can also check our website for um, the library liaison for your major or area. And then next slide. But you can also reach a librarian in a number of other ways. You can call them or text them, email, schedule an appointment, or you can use the live chat feature on the, For on the Forsyth Library website. And then I'm excited to tell you about the um, research help app that we have recently launched. So if you happen to have a mobile device handy, I would encourage you to take it out and take a photo of the QR code on the screen. Um, this will give you instructions to install the app on your device. With this app, you will have instant access to the Ask a Librarian service as well as library tutorials and research and subject guides all at your fingertips. So please feel free and, and take a moment to do that. Okay, and then the next slide. I also wanted to mention that during the fall semester, um, we hosted time-saving research tips workshop series, where we had a workshop directed for each of the five colleges at Fort Hayes State University. So you can um, refer to those recordings if you're looking for um, some very specific um, resources and tips and suggestions um, for your major. So feel free to um, visit that that um, as well, which will take you to the Forsyth Library um, YouTube channel, which is where this recording will will be posted um, a little bit later on. So I did not mention this um, at the beginning of today's session, but just by being here today, um, you all have been entered into a drawing for a prize basket with some fun library materials, um, a gift certificate, and a complimentary library t-shirt. Um, so congratulations to Sheila. You are our winner for today. So before you leave us, um, please be sure and, and put your email in the chat, and then I will follow up with you with just some additional information. So congratulations to you and, and thank you all so much for being here today. Um, just a, a reminder on our final slide that you can follow us on our social media channels to learn more about events and hear about great 
research tips and resources. Um, and then also just be sure to visit the library website um, for access to those resources as well. At this point, I'm going to stop the recording, but I'm sure our librarians will stick around for a few moments if you have any um, questions that have come up uh, that you'd like to discuss. So again, thank you so much for being here this afternoon and take care.